Today, an FDA approval in head and neck cancer, a European approval in lung cancer, a partial hold on a clinical trial in sarcoma, a breakthrough designation in breast cancer, and a missed endpoint in non-small cell lung cancer. Welcome to Enclave News Network, I'm Gina Columbus. The FDA has granted an accelerated approval to pembrolizumab as a treatment for patients with recurrent or metastatic head and neck squamous cell carcinoma following progression on a platinum-based chemotherapy regimen. This is the first immunotherapy agent approved to treat patients with the disease. The indication is based on impressive response rates in the Phase 1b Keynote 12 study. In the efficacy analysis, 174 patients were treated with a prior platinum-based agent. The overall response rate with pembrolizumab was 16%, including a complete response rate of 5%. In 82% of patients, the responses lasted for more than six months. Keynote 12 data that were presented during the 2016 ASCO annual meeting showed that in 192 patients, the ORR was 18% and the stable disease rate was 17%. The 6-month and 12-month PFS rates were 25% and 17% respectively. Additionally, the median OS across evaluable patients was 8 months. 38% of patients were alive at 12 months. The PD-1 inhibitor was approved regardless of PD-L1 staining at a fixed dose of 200 mg every three weeks. A full approval is contingent upon confirmatory results from a larger study. In a statement, Dr. Roger M. Perlmutter, president of Merck Research Laboratories, the developer of pembrolizumab, said, Today's approval represents a meaningful advance for the oncology community, as well as for our head and neck cancer clinical program. Together with prior approvals in the treatment of other tumor types, today's action by the FDA underscores our tireless commitment to addressing the unmet needs of patients suffering from a broad range of cancers. Pembrolizumab was also approved by the European Commission as a treatment for patients with locally advanced or metastatic PD-L1 positive non-small cell lung cancer following at least one chemotherapy regimen. The approval was based on findings from the Keynote 10 trial in which patients who had PD-L1 expression of greater than 1% who received pembrolizumab at the approved dose of 2 mg per kilogram every three weeks had a median overall survival of 10.4 months compared with 8.5 months in patients who received docetaxel. In those with PD-L1 expression greater than 50%, the median OS was 14.9 months with pembrolizumab and 8.2 months with docetaxel. This approval also follows a previously issued recommendation from the Committee for Medicinal Products for Human Use. As part of the indication, patients whose tumors are EGFR or ALK positive must first receive an EGFR or ALK inhibitor, respectively, prior to receiving treatment with pembrolizumab. Pembrolizumab can now be marketed for this indication across the 28 European Union member states. The FDA has placed a partial clinical hold on a planned pivotal trial examining the T-cell therapy NYSO specific peptide enhanced affinity receptor, or SPEAR, in patients with myxoid round cell liposarcoma. Adaptimmune, the manufacturer of the therapy, reported that the hold is not related to any safety issues. In its notification of the hold, the FDA did question the company regarding its trial design and also requested additional information on chemistry, manufacturing, and controls. Because the study is not yet active and no patients have been recruited, the partial hold will not affect patients. In a statement, James Noble, CEO of Adaptimmune, said, We have been in dialogue with the FDA since achieving breakthrough status earlier this year, and this partial clinical hold requires a number of questions to be answered before we can start a new MRCLS trial intended to be used for registration purposes. We will be providing a full response to the FDA shortly and will update the markets when we have further news to report. The FDA granted a breakthrough therapy designation to the T-cell therapy in February 2016 for the treatment of patients with inoperable or metastatic pretreated synovial sarcoma who harbor HLAA-201, HLAA-205, or HLAA-206 alleles and whose tumors express the NYSO1 tumor antigen which is highly expressed in the majority of synovial sarcomas and MRCLS. The designation was based on a phase 1-2 trial in which the treatment induced a 50% response rate in patients with unresectable, metastatic, or recurrent synovial sarcoma previously treated with chemotherapy. 
In breast cancer, the FDA has granted a breakthrough therapy designation to the CDK4-6 inhibitor ribocyclib in combination with letrozole as a potential frontline treatment for patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative disease. The decision was based on findings from the Phase 3 Mona Lisa 2 trial in which ribocyclib and letrozole demonstrated a significant improvement in progression-free survival compared with letrozole alone. Because of the improvement, the trial was halted in May 2016. The FDA's designation is meant to expedite the development of promising new therapies. While data have not yet been released, it will be presented at an upcoming medical meeting and considered for regulatory submissions. In a statement, Alessandro Riva, MD, Global Head, Oncology Development and Medical Affairs at Novartis Oncology, the company manufacturing ribocyclib, said, This designation shows the potential of LEE-011 and we look forward to close collaboration with the FDA and the advanced breast cancer community to provide a new treatment option for women living with HR-positive, HER2-negative, advanced breast cancer as quickly as possible. Other CDK4-6 inhibitors, such as abemocyclib and palbocyclib, are also in development in this space. Palbocyclib is already approved as a frontline therapy in combination with letrozole and as a second-line treatment with fulvestrin for patients with HR-positive, HER2-negative, advanced breast cancer. In non-small cell lung cancer, single-agent nivolumab failed to improve progression-free survival in patients with pdl one positive disease when compared with physician's choice of combination therapy. The disappointing results were from the Phase 3 Checkmate 026 study, which explored the agent in 541 patients with non-squamous and squamous disease who had pdl one expression of 5% or greater. Full results of Checkmate 026 are being prepared for presentation at an upcoming medical meeting, according to Merck, the developer of the drug. Subsequent analyses of Checkmate 026 will continue to assess subpopulations, including PDL1. Additionally, overall survival and overall response rates will be assessed. Prior Phase 3 studies have shown mixed results for nivolumab for PFS, with many failing to show a benefit for the PD-1 inhibitor versus standard therapies. A full analysis of the data from Checkmate 026 will be needed before a full conclusion can be drawn. The top-line findings from the study did come as a surprise to the oncology community, as nivolumab's main competitor, pembrolizumab, demonstrated promising overall survival and PFS results as a monotherapy for patients with high pdl one expressing NSCLC, according to top-line findings from the Phase 3 Keynote 024 study. That trial enrolled 305 squamous and non-squamous patients with tumors with more than 50% PD-L1 expression, representing a more selective group. That's all for today. Thank you for watching on Clive News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.